You are now tuned in to Not Without Alonzo. Uh, who's the girl on that song? Turn Flights? Yeah. Michelle So it was Michelle Yeah. Michelle. Okay, I don't know why I thought it was somebody else. It wasn't supposed to be her, though. Oh, is that? Okay, it tell me the story. It was never supposed to be her. Oh, okay. Um, right before the crew broke up, well, well, when the crew was together, people know us for surgery and juice. Mm -hmm. Okay? But our biggest song before Turn Off Flights was Lovers. Okay. Lovers was huge down south. We got a lot of love off of Lovers. That closed our show. And uh, that got us the most radio play. That was the most, you know, because it sounded like it was, it, was, it was almost like float on. The four of us mm. did individual parts. And uh, when things got tight, we decided, I, I decided to go and do another album. I mean, mm -hmm. do another slow song. And, it, and straight out of Compton, they kind of referred to that. Okay. Mm. Which, when Dre tells, you know, and I tell Dre, you, you be working on a slow song we, mm -hmm. we working on. Okay. That's a, a stab gotcha. at, at me. But the one to just turn off the lights, because that was that was the that was when we broke up. Okay. Okay. We was arguing over what was gonna uh, bring us back. Okay. Hmm. Now, for all y'all who know who, who who don't know, they were not in WA yet. They were still Dre, Dr. Dre, and Yella. Okay. We were world class wrecking crew. They had got a dose of. Uh, uh, LL Cool J and Run DMC, they wanted to change their flavor. Mm. Okay, we had just got dropped from CBS. We brought Stereo Crew over. We did a, we did a couple EPs. One on uh, I did an EP on Stereo Crew. And they changed their name to CIA. And we did another one for Wrecking Crew that was called the House Calls out. We had House Calls, Must Be the Music and Cabbage Patch. And um, that didn't do nothing because McCola was putting one on us. He was he was oh man he was. He had recalled all our old records back in, so we had to go back to Makota. We was in debt like $90,000. Mm. What I didn't know, all the records he had called in, they were still selling, but he wasn't telling me. Mm. Ah. Okay. So I went down there and confiscated all my stuff, mm -hmm. sold it myself, got out of debt, and then uh, by the time Turn Off the Life came around, I was out of debt to him. He's, he's kept all the money from uh, Turn Off the Light, I mean, from, uh, from Cabbage Patch and from, uh, from uh, CIA, mm -hmm. which put us all in a strain, okay? They, everybody mad at me, okay, because we ain't got no money. I'm trying to explain it to them, but meanwhile, I, after, after a while, I was able to get, to get the product back. Make a long story short, I was low on money. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to bet on something, okay? And I wasn't in a position to bet on no gangster rap. It ain't been proven yet. Yeah. And that's the part people don't understand. I'm, we at the cusp for all this stuff. We ain't, ain't nobody proof. Ain't no Easy E. Mm -hmm. Ain't no Dr. Dre. You know, we still it's still the L.A. Dream Team, World Class Record Crew, Egyptian Lover, and Toddy T and, and Ice T. Dude, we still running shit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when it came time for me to spend my money. I spent it on turn up the lights. Dre had been playing with this beat for a while. He'd been playing with this beat for a while. Uh, this new birthish type beat. Mm -hmm. and so that's I, a Dre beat. Uh, oh, is that a Dre beat? It's a new birthish type new, beat. Oh, okay. Okay. New birthish. Oh, okay. Keep okay. on. Keep on. Uh, <laughs> and uh, nobody wanted to be bothered with it. Uh -huh. Nobody wanted to deal with it. Nah, man. Ain't fuck that. We're gonna do something. We'll do something else. We're gonna be. We're gonna be hard. To, man, that ain't wrecking crew. Yeah. That ain't wrecking crew. And. Uh, this true story. God worked in mysterious ways. I'll never forget this as long as I live. A lady had told me some shit like that. You know, look, if you're going to do this, you better do it right. I don't play, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And I'm at the Compton Swap Meet, slinging some records. And uh, it came to me like I, like I had food poisoning. Mm -hmm. It's just like, turn up the lights. Grandmaster Lion, turn off the lights. Uh, um, before you turn off the lights, the whole night. I mean, I wrote the whole song in the Swap Meet parking lot. Mm. At the Compton Swap Meet, I wrote the whole song wow. in the parking lot on the back of an album cover. That's cool. You know, you had the little white sleeves you yeah. had. I wrote the whole song in that sleeve. Well, everybody's part, but nobody wanted to do it. Brought it back to the studio. Dre started punching it out. Mm. Okay, and uh, then they, then they, then they jacked me. Mm. They didn't want to do it. Cause we, I, I only had I only had a few dollars. I okay. had enough money to go to the studio. Okay. And they, when we don't get no money, we ain't going to the studio. So they blackmail me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I caved in, do this, okay. And uh, we did it. I paid them. Then uh, Mona, I found out Mona Lisa, who the song was written for, mm -hmm. 
She's in Connecticut. Oh, shit. With Kashif. With the Sheaf? Kashif. Oh, Kashif. Oh, the Kashif. super producer. Yeah, super mm-hmm. producer. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I, and the last, but before he died, he and I kicked it by. I said, you know, you changed hip hop history. Mm-hmm. I met him. Well, what I do? Mm-hmm. I say this. I told him the story. Mm. And I said because because Mona Lisa was singing with you, I had to go call Michelle up from the Miners. Wow. First time in the studio, and she did her thing. Hmm. Okay. Now she said she did the melody. Now you went your first time in the studio. She said she what? She said she did the melody. You no, know, oh, okay. I wrote this. I did. You did not. Huh. <laughs> you had your first time in the studio. You scared to death. Uh-huh. You scared to death. Okay. And you know she got this thing. She had this thing back then, which I thought was crazy because every time Mona sang, we had to get some hot tea, hot coffee. Mm-hmm. But she wanted two strawberry milkshakes from Jack in the Box. Hmm. You want what? <laughs> Two strawberry milkshakes from Jack in the Box. Hmm. Okay, just have some back. <laughs> right back. Okay, and uh, she knocked it out shortly after that. And it, when she did it, that last note, my signature note that I need my girls to hit, she couldn't do it. Mm. Now nah, she said she did all the work. No, you did not. Mm. And, oh, no, no, no. Dre didn't dish you like that either. Yeah. Okay, everybody they climbed the voice like, nigga, where you find Minnie Mouse at? Okay. okay, we got to make this song. We got. To. Studio, t- I got enough money to finish this shit today. Like, we gotta, we gotta do this. And uh, she did it. And Donovan, the uh, engineer, cut it together, made mm-hmm. it work. And uh, shortly after that, we broke up. Hmm. Rec-, Rec crew broke up, and uh, they went their way, and I went mine. And that was like in the end of the year, like around October, November. Well, back in the day. The record industry shut down all the playlists to start playing Christmas music right after Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. So I, I dropped a couple of dollars. Um, Makoda dropped a couple of dollars on a uh, independent promoter to help us try and get this record played before they froze up the list. Mm-hmm. And did nothing happen. What I thought did nothing happen. And January one, like this time of year, mm-hmm. January one, like two, uh, 1980. Seven, eighty-seven, eighty-six, eighty-seven. I got the number one Negro record in the world. Damn, blowing up, mm-hmm. blowing up. Yep, I remember hearing. I ain't got no group. Damn, I'm nope. sitting home by myself. Mm. They gone. House empty. I got straight up empty nest. Damn, ain't nobody here no more. Everybody gone. Now then they then that rumor has it they told somebody. Well, he knew it was going to be a hit. That's why he quit. How do you know something's going to be a goddamn hit? How the fuck you know some shit like that? Man. <laughs> fuck you know. <laughs> he, knew what he, he knew what he was doing. Huh. He knew he had a hit record. That's why he, that's why he dumped us. Hmm. Huh? That doesn't even make sense. So after a while, man, um, I just, dude, I was I was blown away. One, I got a hit record. I ain't never had a record this big in my life. Mm-hmm. I ain't got no group. And Jerry Heller was managing Wrecking Crew and N.W.A. Hmm. Okay, and uh, so he would call. I was getting offered five, seven, ten thousand dollars. No, I ain't going nowhere, man. I ain't got no group. I'm, I'm playing Prince. To to what? To perform? To perform? Oh, I'm, but I'm, you don't have. Yeah, oh, shit. Yeah, I, I ain't got no group. I, yeah. Oh shit. Know, I'm, 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 plus I'm a little. I'm a little. You know. I'm on the look, little ego trip. Okay. I, like Prince on I got a hit record. I ain't got to perform. <laughs> and Jerry like, man, dude, you done missed about 70 G, 60, 70 G's here. You might want to go and find you somebody else. So I grabbed Battle Cat. Okay. Richie Rich, Mona Lisa, and we hit the road. And the Uzi Brothers. And um, man, we had a ball. 